lightning may be to blame for an early morning house fire. We're going to hear from one of the people who escaped from that home coming up. And the family of a 15-year-old boy begs for tips on his murder. He was found shot dead in an alley not far from his home. Plus, marriage licenses for same-sex couples finally issued in Denton County, but that's not true for another county. We have details ahead. Waking up all North Texas in high definition. Thanks for watching Good Day on Fox 4. Good morning, Tuesday, June 30th. I'm Tim Ryan. I'm Lauren Prisbel. Well, if you slept through this one, you may want to check your pulse. You may be dead. It was loud. You may want to check. A powerful storm blew through overnight. There was dust, apparently, and then there was high winds, rain, lightning. It's crazy. Storm dumped heavy rain, and uh, there was some flooding in some areas, but on quite the light show at one point. More than 20,000 electric customers were without power. We got an update that's been reduced to 5,500. A family escaped an early morning house fire caused by one of those lightning strikes. When firefighters arrived about 5 o'clock this morning, there were flames shooting through the roof. The family inside says a large boom woke them up. They immediately smelled smoke. Uh, we all woke up and uh, it just kept getting more and more smokier to the point where it's getting hard to breathe. Um, and eventually I just started hearing like crackling coming from the ceiling and I, I told them it must have, it has to be the house on the roof. Well, as we mentioned, everyone made it out safely, but uh, quite the night. Jeez, Evan. Yeah, it was pretty wild lightning out of these storms and some gusty winds, but you get those with thunderstorms. I, I had to take this back. I wanted to take it back five hours so you could see what was going on about three o'clock this morning when you were probably woken up. And watch that batch of storms come through Dallas. Didn't do much over in Tarrant County, except maybe right along the line. And then they quickly headed south. But the, the ironic thing is they've been building to the southwest, which is an unusual direction, but they're building towards the increased moisture content down there. Right now they are really pretty far south. Let me stop the radar so you can actually see it go right now. And the heaviest storm that we've got at this hour is sitting just north of Lake Whitney. It is right there near Walnut Springs, north of Meridian, building your direction. Otherwise, we just have some plain old rain around Hillsborough and raining around Corsica. Canada and rain is about to end around Gun Barrel City in Athens. There's not a lot left. This is certainly on the way out, but you can see that cluster just blow through here. That's what happens when you have a northwest flow in the atmosphere. You can get those clusters that build south into the heat and humidity. We're, remember, we we're 96 yesterday and had all that muggy air. The storms move away. The filtered sunshine turns into mostly sunny skies as we begin to heat things up. Maybe just shy of 90 thanks to the fact that we did cool off a bit overnight, but then 96 the afternoon hours. 20% storm coverage later today from the Dallas-Fort Worth area south and east. These would be small and brief, not a cluster like what rolled through overnight. However, this pattern may start to kick up again by the end of the week, starting Thursday night or Friday, and we'll have to track more of these storms in the seven-day forecast coming up. Tracking the traffic troubles. Uh -huh. One person is not a happy camper this morning. Yeah, the driver of that vehicle that ended up catching fire under the hood. It spread quickly into uh, the front end of the vehicle, and that's when the fire department thought they had tapped it out. Then a little small hot spot actually Pop back up again, so they had to put more halon on it. The two right lanes are still blocked, and we're waiting for a record. So you talk about a tight cluster. It is very slow all the way back to the LBJ interchange in the high five. And speaking of the high five, heading to the high five on LBJ, suddenly difficult, and there's the reason why. In Greenville Avenue, we have a problem in the HOV lane, and the police and fire departments are heading to this scene, could very easily block off the HOV and left lane, when they get here, quick note on the I-20 trouble around the Park Springs area. Just one vehicle remains. It's way over on the right shoulder, and the speeds are picking up nicely in this area. That's a quick look at the morning drive. Tim? Thanks. A man was shot and killed overnight in East Oak Cliff, Dallas. Police trying to determine if this happened during a carjacking because the man's car is missing. The neighborhood is near Keist and Illinois. And police are trying to figure out who killed a 15-year-old boy in Oak Cliff. Saul's live with the details. 
He was a good student here at uh, Quintanilla Middle School in Oak Cliff. They say he tried to stay out of trouble and that uh, they don't understand how someone could shoot him and then leave him for dead in an alley. Now, this all happened around uh, 1.45 in the morning on Sunday. 15-year-old Joe Martinez was last seen around midnight at his uncle's house. His mother thought that he was spending the night there, but his uncle says that Martinez only stayed there for about 15 minutes and then left. His body was found around 7.30 on Sunday morning by a job in an alley in the 2800 block of West Brooklyn Avenue here in Oak Cliff. Police say that he had been shot in the head. What his brothers are going to do now without him, I don't know. He was a man of the house and he knew that. He knew he held everything down at home. Initially, police were not able to identify him because he had no ID on him. They put out a description of the clothing that he was wearing. His mother just happened to see it online and instantly knew that it was her son. The killer on the loose this morning and police asking if anyone knows anything to give them a call. Reporting live in Oak Cliff, Saul Garza for Good Day. Thank you, Saul. The city of Fort Worth is holding a citywide vigil tonight to show support for Charleston, South Carolina in the wake of the deadly church shooting there. And Latoya is live with more. Yeah, Tim and Lauren, this is the latest uh, vigil or uh, memorial service to remember those who lost their lives that day at that church. Uh, very sad situation, and the mayor is also calling on people to attend today's service that will be happening uh, later this evening. They're calling it Solidarity with Charleston. Now, we have some video we want to show you of one of the nine victims who was uh, memorialized just on yesterday. 59-year-old Myra Thompson became a minister the day that she was killed during that Bible study. Now, Governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley, broke down and apologized for the attacks that, quote, happened on her watch. All of the victims were white and police contend that the attack was racially, mo or were black, and police contend that the uh, attack was racially motivated. Four of the victims were buried over the weekend. Friday, President Barack Obama gave the eulogy for Reverend Clementa Pickney, Emmanuel AME's pastor and a state senator. He spoke about the need to address issues like gun control. Now, we were also at one of the first local prayer services to remember the nine people who were gunned down at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina. The faith-based community and others in North Texas have been rocked by the tragedy, but many hope that coming together will help them heal, and they'll do so tonight at Fort Worth right here at Broadway Baptist Church at 7 o'clock tonight. Reporting live in Fort Worth, I'm LaToya Silman for Good Day. Thanks, Latoya. Well, surveillance video shows one of the two people who broke into cars in Parker County, west of Fort Worth. Seven cars were hit last week, and all of them reportedly unlocked. So that's a warning for you. The video shows a woman in her late teens or mid-20s. The man, we are told, is about the same age. They took money, electronics, bags, and a wallet from those mostly unlocked cars. A gay and lesbian partners in Denton County lined up Monday. That was the first day for the issuance of a same-sex marriage license there. On Friday, the county clerk refused to issue licenses, even after that U.S. Supreme Court ruling that legalized gay marriage in all 50 states. Monday, after the meaning of that uh, court decision became much more clear, Denton and Collin counties began issuing licenses. First in line in Denton, Whitney Hennon and Sarah Bollinger. We just want to be us and love each other and live our life. That's all we want. We are like anyone else and we just want everyone to be happy and we are feeling so happy and that's really, it's a really, really great feeling. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton had told state and county workers that they could refuse to issue same-sex marriage licenses if that would violate their religious beliefs. And in Hood County, the county clerk Katie Lang is refusing to issue those licenses to same-sex couples. She says she is standing up for her religious rights. So far, she tells us no same-sex couples have put her to the test. Rockwall County began processing applications on Monday. The Parker County Clerk's Office says it is waiting for new forms, should have them today or certainly no later than Thursday. The Supreme Court will also hear the uh, state's affirmative action case for a second time. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which sided twice with the University of Texas, refused to take the case again. It began in 2008 when Abigail Fisher sued after she was not admitted to the school. The case will be argued now in the fall. It is 10 minutes after 8 o'clock. Lots of deals out there if you know where to look and how to play the game. Steve Noviello does and he shares some of his secrets. The European Commission offers Greece a last-minute bailout from defaulting on its debts.
Evan has a look at the summer-like forecast with a chance of rain for this final day of June. We'll be right back. This hour, comedian Finesse Mitchell previews Beat the Champions on Fox and a July 4th feast that'll light up your guest taste buds. I'll go back for seconds. The semi-final showdown tonight in women's soccer between the U.S. and Germany, and Germany considered to be the number one team. It's the seventh time in seven World Cups the American women have reached the semifinals. Coverage starts 5 p.m. tonight on Fox 4. Come on, ladies. They're going to be watching. Oh, yeah. We have a couple that they've, they've had some tough times, and they said they haven't been playing their best, but they're hoping tonight's the night that they really can step it up. Rise to the occasion. Yeah, they've got to beat them. Um, should be a good night for Yeah. Them. Uh, especially in Canada. Of course, and and by the way, you have permission to eat uh, dinner in front of the television tonight, only because the game's on. There you go. Okay. You have those old TV dinners with the seven different compartments in it? Mm -hmm. Good night for it. All right, let's show you the birthdays. Right now, first one leading us off is Jack Livingston, who has won. Grant Walker, who has also won. Aria Taylor is two. Phoenix Towns, two. Amaya Yanez is three. Jaden Garcia is three. Ryan and Yelaya, they are both five. They get along well, obviously. And Riley Harrison, happy birthday to you. 
at five. Well, we had our storms this morning, and if you slept through them and you woke up, you go, mm, just another perfect day in paradise. I can tell you about three, four in the morning, a lot of you were probably up going, uh-oh, do we have to deal with this again? Thunderstorms came blowing through right down 75 and 35E. That's the Dallas corridor. It did not get to Fort Worth. What's left of them right now, just north of Lake Whitney, building slowly south. That's the strongest storm I've got. Maybe it gets to Meridian because this whole complex is really hitting the, it's hitting the brick wall. It's falling apart. And it still exists around Corsicana at this hour over to Kearns and the Athens area, but just plain old rain at this point. Stronger storms building down towards Waco and Grosbeck and Mejia. Nothing's going to be severe out of this, but you can see them building down south. So give it another I'd give it another hour and these should be almost out of the area. Seeing the sunshine, you can see it from the Metroplex on north, high clouds dropping south and that's going to allow us to heat up. Do we have any more? Maybe today. As the main disturbance drifts south, there's still going to be enough energy floating around, probably from the Metroplex east and south to produce a few isolated storms this afternoon. The front that caused these is going to weaken and fall apart. And over the next couple of days, we're going to be in the mid 90s for highs, very warm. New storms starting to form coming out of the northwest up around North Dakota and Montana. Now, it's a little bit different than it's been the last couple of days. The storms we have over us today came out of Nebraska, South Dakota, so we were more in the B line for this one. The next ones will probably just miss us to the north, but they could clip the Paris area. So we'll keep a low storm chance in there with that northwesterly flow, but I can tell you there are indications again, this will pick up by Thursday night and Friday, and we may see some more of these storms coming out of Oklahoma by the end of the week. But for today, we're in the mid 90s again this afternoon, 95, 96. Heat of the day, you can see a couple of those little thunderstorms popping up, probably Metroplex East and South, best chances. They'll die out quickly this evening and overnight. Now tomorrow morning we will not have a repeat, but we may see a few storms clip up by Paris in the afternoon, one or two down by Waco. It is a low storm chance tomorrow. Probably not much Thursday either. The 30% will drop to 20% this afternoon. That's the cover this morning. 96 the next couple of days, winds will be shifting to the south-southwest. Now on Friday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, got to watch more of these coming out of Oklahoma, or it could be during the day Friday. Timing at this point is a little questionable, but the impulse looks to be there, so there will be some storms on Friday. Now Saturday and Sunday, we will also have 20% shower and storm coverage. Those look to be more heat of the day, between 1 and maybe 6, 7 o'clock. They should die out in time for the fireworks. Chip. Thank you, Evan. Quick reminder that driving in to Richardson from Dallas and continuing up into Plano is difficult. Two right lanes still blocked from an earlier vehicle fire. And then on LBJ, HOV lane and left lane blocked in the westbound direction. You can see the fire department there with the fire engine there and ambulance on scene of this incident. The backup is growing quickly back into Garland around the Northwest Highway interchange. We need to next shift our attention over to the northwest side of the DFW airport on northbound Highway 121 just before the 114 merge, a new crash. And you can already see the damage done to 121. It's heavy back through the Glade Crossing area. 360 also overloading back toward Glade Road. So please keep that in mind. Lorna Tim. Oh, Greece got a last minute offer from the European Commission to keep it from defaulting on its debts. Uh, Greece owes $1.9 billion in a payment to the International Monetary Fund today. And the country's foreign minister, uh, actually finance minister, that should say, uh, says it will not make that payment and that might force its exit from the European Union. Major player in the talks, Germany, says the door is open for a solution, but going through that door is up to Greece. It is 8.20 coming up next. Steve Noviello has a look at some simple ways to save money when shopping online. Here are the winning lottery numbers. Then you wouldn't need to worry about money. You tell Noviello, what? I'm rich. There is nothing quite as beautiful as cash. Some people say it's folly, but I'd rather have the lolly. With money you can make a splash. There is nothing quite as wonderful as money. Money, money, money. There's nothing like a newly minted pound. Money, money, money. money. Everyone.
you can find deals online if you know how to play the game. And consumer reporter Steve Noviello does, and he's going to help <laughs> us out, right? Well, this is how we can get a discount every time. You know, and really that's what it's all about, right? Because so many of us go to shop online because we feel mm. that's where the deals are. Mm. But yeah. I'll tell you what, if you are not sweetening the pot with an additional kind of savings, you may be leaving money on the table. Your first stop is customer service, either the live chat or on the phone. I do this all the time, okay? Let's say you're out buying something, you know, you've, you're looking at it online and maybe you're yeah. a little bit on the fence about the price. Right. Ask customer service if there is any way they can sweeten the deal with some sort of discount uh -huh. code. Take a look, okay? okay? I actually just did this the other day. I was shopping for an oversized frame for my house. Frames can be very expensive depending yes. on how big the piece of art is. The company I was shopping with already advertises themselves as the guaranteed lowest price in the country. And I'll tell you what, they absolutely are. This was the cheapest I could possibly find, but it wasn't cheap enough. So I asked the customer service. Because you're a cheapskate. Because I'm cheapskate, right? <laughs> so I asked the customer service person, hey, could you sweeten the deal a little bit? Not only did they give me 10% off on that frame, but on anything else I wanted to buy that oh, day. Oh, they gave you a code. Gave I me a love coupon codes. code. One time use, <laughs> all I had to do was ask. Right, okay. and, and sometimes they will chase you down like a dog, won't they? Well, you know, the, the bottom line is this. Look, th never forget that as bad as you want to buy, they want to sell, right? And the thought that maybe you are an already captive audience, you know, mm -hmm. especially a lot of folks, you ever do this, you go shopping online, you add a whole bunch of stuff to the cart. Yeah. Then just leave the cart <laughs> and see what happens. You, I know, do this, I right? I this, and then you start getting the emails like, hey, did you did, did you leave something in your cart? Yes. And you want to buy that? And at first I thought like, okay, this is creepy that they were like, <laughs> you know, sending me these emails after knowing I was just on there. But then I noticed that they sent me some coupons. Yeah, codes. so here's what we see a lot of times. Uh, companies will say, will recognize, okay, you've got things in your cart. Right. We really would love for you to buy those things. <laughs> so they will follow up with an email of some sort that says, hey, wait right. a minute. Don't forget, you've got stuff in the cart. Uh, we'll give you 20% off. Will, will that yeah. make you buy the stuff in the cart? Here's a couple of rules. And Tim, you mentioned this before we've been on the air. Uh, you want to make sure that you have an account. They need, they need your email address to find you. So this only really works with stores with which you already have some sort of uh, right. account or relationship. Right. Uh, you know, and I will say this, we've got actually a, a list of companies who are kind of notorious for doing this. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to the link in just a second. Okay. Uh, but first, uh, I want to talk about uh, discounted gift cards online. Do you ever go this route? No. This is a great trick. Okay. Yeah? Okay. What's go to trick? websites like, credit, uh, like giftcards.com yeah. where people will buy and sell their credit cards. It's a virtual online marketplace maybe I, I don't like uh, you know black and white and you don't like Toys R Us or whatever the case is right so you're swapping and buying go there buy your gift cards at a discount sometimes up to 25% off use the gift card the full value to buy the stuff online that way you're building in your own sale or and if you're not doing this do you do Ebates Oh, no. What's Ebates? Okay, your life's about to change. <laughs> okay. Here oh, we go. Oh. Ebates is an online shopping portal. We did a story about this years ago, and I thought, really? I mean, how much money could you possibly okay, make? So Ebates. I started using Ebates. Here's the deal. All you have to do is click through Ebates to get to your favorite st uh, store online. They will automatically give you cash back. Do you see some of these percentages up here? Sometimes like 15, 20%, generally going to be more around the four, five, six, seven percent. Just because you clicked on their thing first? Just because you click through their portal. Yeah. In some cases, <laughs> they will run specials, and oftentimes you can even use coupon codes once you get to the e-tailer's website. Uh, and once a huh. quarter about, they send you what is called your big fat check made out to you. So every now and again, just when you think, you know, the day couldn't possibly get any worse, you open up the mail and there's a check. A eBay. physical check. A physical check. You break, take it down to the bank or your credit union, you cash the check, and all you did was shop the way you normally shop, but yet you used Ebates no, to get there. No, shop the way you normally shop. No, by Noviello <laughs> normally shops, and that's how you save money. <laughs> nice. All right, we've got links to credit card, to giftcards.com, a list of e-tailers known for sending you the coupon when you abandon the cart, and okay. of course, Ebates, all right now on our station website, fox4news.com. Ebates. Abandon cart. Abandon cart. <laughs> It works, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more to come. Our Major League Soccer team from North Texas is uh, showing support for Team USA in the Women's World Cup. We've got a preview. Did you hear the storms that moved through overnight? Oh my goodness. Seven has a look at our next chance of rain, and Chip has a check in the morning commute. <laughs>
It's 8.30 a.m. Good Day continues live and local on Fox 4. Okay, so the storm's pretty much out of here. Oh, Plus, they're gone. Yeah. yeah they're, and they're, they're almost off the radar. Well, unless, unless you're in some parts of our viewing area where they're still there and they're going, no, Prisbal, they're not gone yet. <laughs> they're almost gone. Meteorologist Tim and Lauren, I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, what they were doing is looking at that. That's a cheat sheet. They're looking at the radar right now. But I wanted to talk about where the storms actually went to. And they're right. There are still a few in our southern counties. But it kind of made this beeline. And it, Dallas was kind of like the do not cross line. Once you got to Fort Worth, there was practically nothing. Uh, some areas, I got a call from a nice lady down in uh, the Red Oak area in Maypearl. Got an inch and a half of rain from these storms. And you can see where they went to. And where are they now? Well, Dallas and Fort Worth. With nothing even close at this hour. We do have the strongest of the storms, at least in our area, sitting just to the south of Cleburne at this hour. Most of what we are seeing down here is just garden variety showers. The amount of lightning out of this has really come down in the last hour, so they're in the process of falling apart out around Walnut Springs and Lake Whitney. Lake Whitney does not need any more rain. Still a little rain down towards the west area in Waco, but it is in the process of weakening. That cluster of storms as it pushes through through. There's nothing behind it immediately, but there will be a few more that pop up later today. I'll give it 20% at 9 o'clock, honestly. It might be down to 10% by then. Either way, it's gone after about 10. Noontime should be dry, 89 degrees with sunshine, heating in, into the mid-90s this afternoon. There will be a few showers and storms probably after about 2, 3 o'clock between that and maybe 7 and then they'll weaken to about 10% by 9 o'clock and fall apart. This is not the only chance in the next seven days. There are better chances by the end of the week coming back, and we'll discuss that in a few minutes. Chip, it's been a pretty rough commute for many folks, but get us through the rest of it. All right, I'll do just that. But first, you folks in the out-of-control room, skip the first locator because <laughs> I just lost camera connectivity to where the first problem was. Northbound I-35 up around Walnut Hill. There's a crash in the left lane. So just take note of that, you folks that move on the western side of Dallas heading up towards Farmers Branch. This is LBJ Greenville Avenue. HOV lane, left lane still blocked, but the first responders, that'd be the fire engine, ambulance, have already left the scene. We just have police cruisers waiting on a wrecker for that pickup truck. Backup continues to grow at a rapid rate back towards Mesquite. For those folks trying to head from the High Five on Central Northbound up toward Campbell Road, we've had a long-standing problem at the Campbell Road interchange that's been in the two right lanes, and you can still see that activity there. They've actually opened up the right center lane in the last few minutes. Wrecker has the vehicle loaded up, and this should clear away before 9 o'clock. Tim and Lauren. Thanks. New this morning, a car, a driver of a car, we should say, lost control, crashed into the front yard of a home, narrowly missing the house, as you can see. Happened about 7 o'clock this morning in East Oak Cliff near Ledbetter and Lancaster, or Lancaster rather. Two people injured. No other details from police. All right, so Team USA takes on tough German team tonight for the Women's World Cup of Soccer, one of the semifinals. Right, and you can see it where? Fox 4. Yeah. Right here. Jenny is here to explain. Yeah, so the last time the teams met was in 2013. USA beat Germany, but then they tied 3-3 three to three a few months later. So it'll be interesting to see what happens tonight. It is certainly going to be a tough game at this tournament. Team USA already beat 28th and 16th ranked teams, but Germany is ranked number one and has been on a mission since losing at home in the quarterfinals of the 2011 World Cup. So Germany has scored the most goals of any team in the tournament at 20, but Team USA has only allowed one goal in the entire tournament. Germany and America are even in terms of titles. Both have won two World Cups. Team USA is going to have the advantage, though, of having a full house as fans pour across the border into Canada to cheer them on. After tonight, the winner will face the winner of tomorrow's Japan-England game. The final game of the Women's World Cup is Sunday in Vancouver. Here in North Texas, in the midst of a busy schedule, FC Dallas is hosting a watch party. Some of the players are family friends. Oh, it brings a ton. Uh, I think if you've been paying attention to the games, even on TV, you can tell when the U.S. plays, the stadium's packed. I mean, there's a standing room only. Uh, TV ratings have gone up. Uh, I know in my household it's an exciting time, especially since my wife is uh, really good friends with several of the women on that team. So it's been, it's been great, and uh, it's cool to see how the country has continued to respond and support them throughout this tournament. 
All right, so you can see number two ranked U.S. versus number one ranked Germany in the Women's World Cup semifinal tonight on Fox 4. Coverage starts at 5 o'clock. The game will happen after that. And FC Dallas is hosting that watch party. If you want to check it out, it will be at the Granada on Greenville tonight. Doors open at 5 o'clock. It is 21 and over, and they'll be having some fun giveaways and prizes. I'm Jenny and Chando for a good day. All right, thanks, Jenny. Thanks. 835 right now. It is a battle between amateur athletes and some professionals, the best in sports. And you can see it on Fox. We've got a preview of the new show, Beat the Champions. And actor Sean Penn apparently wasting no time moving on after calling off his engagement to Charlize Theron, who he was spotted with coming up when we talked to TMZ. With no kisses. Welcome back. It is 8.38. Sean Penn has moved on and Shia LaBeouf shirtless. TMZ's Harvey Levin joins us live this morning. Good morning to you, Harvey. Okay, what is this about Sean Penn? Because didn't he just end his engagement with Charlize Theron? A week and a half ago. Um, and then last week, um, he was at one of the premier restaurants in the United States called French Laundry in the Napa oh, yeah. Valley in California. And uh, there was Minka Kelly at the same table celebrating her 35th birthday. Um, there were three other people there, but Sean and Minka, I mean, everybody in the restaurant heard it, they're a small restaurant. They were talking about how they met during a charity event. It was, a, you know, French London is a romantic place. And she was celebrating her 35th birthday. She went on Twitter afterwards, never mentioned Sean's name, but just had this fantastic birthday and this and that. Oh. And... Um, and we got pictures of this. And, um, you know, it, it's almost like uh, Charlize Who. And, yeah, we are talking a week and actually less than a week um, after they broke up because um, the pictures were taken last week. Hmm. So it does appear that way, doesn't it? Makes you wonder what really happened. Yeah, well, those uh, pictures, by the way, on TMZ, you can see them on their website. Uh, let's talk about Shia LaBeouf. And apparently people were, thought he was a crazy man. What was going on? He's shooting a movie um, near Mount Rushmore, 
And um, he went there over the weekend, um, but people didn't know it was him. He didn't have a shirt on, and he's just screaming, America, America, but screaming this. And there were all the people around thought it was this crazy drunk guy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they realize it's Shia LaBeouf. And you got to look at the video. I mean, we're going to have it in the show tonight. Um, on a level, it's really, really funny. Um, but sums up with him. I mean, you remember he last week he put his head through a, a glass window, um, which was part of the movie, um, and got I think 21 stitches. And yeah. you know now it, it is it is a you got to see the video. Yeah, we're watching some of the video right now, and that's him in the black shorts right there, no shirt on. And then he starts like there's like an, an older woman who's walking by, and he like runs up to her and he's yelling America, America, and very very. He bizarre. asked her for a date. He asked her for a date. Oh, did he really? Yeah, yes. something is super bizarre. All right, and speaking about I bizarre, know. Paris Hilton says um, she might be filing a lawsuit because there was some sort of, what, like trick played on her, which she didn't think was very funny at all. Well, I don't know how you can even call this a trick. It is appalling what happened. Um, there is a, um, a TV sh uh, state, uh, show in Dubai. Uh -huh. And um, they were interviewing her over the sky, uh, in the skies of Dubai um, for what looked like a talk show kind of thing. Okay. And Paris didn't know. All of a sudden, the plane, the engine seemed to quit, and the plane starts nosediving, and, sh and, and she thinks she's going to die. I mean, they're all screaming, we're crashing, we're crashing. And the back of the plane opens up. Somebody f looks like they fall out of the back, and... Then the plane is somehow then she, it gets pulled out of the nosedive and it ultimately lands. And when she gets off the plane, she is hysterical. I mean, she really thought the plane was crashing. Yeah. And then they tell her it was all a prank. Oh, so she's going to sue. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was so not cool. And when you look at the video, it is it is absolutely unbelievable. Wow. Um, unbelievable that they would do something like this. She's flipped out about flying and she flies for a living really because she goes all around the world True. and she's going to sue for emotional distress and I got to tell you Paris Hilton has never had so much sympathy as with this. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Thank you so much Harvey. Appreciate it. Okay, Lauren. You can see TMZ weeknights at 11 p.m., weekdays at 3 p.m. here on Fox 4. You can also find a link to the show's website at fox4news.com. Coming up on Good Day, add a little flair to your dishes this July 4th. What you can make besides that same old potato salad. And amateur athletes compete against Olympians and pros on Fox 4. We've got a preview of Beat the Champions coming up.
world-class athletes are ready to take out ordinary schlubs like you and me in the uh, new Fox show, Beat the Champions. <laughs> Good morning to host Finesse Mitchell, who goes from the comedy stage to the game show yes. hosting stage. And you're, you're a sports guy anyway, right? I'm a sports guy, man. Former University of Miami alumni, uh, walk on on the football team. And if it wasn't for my GPA and my slip disc, I would still be playing. I would be playing pro right now. But thank God they found a show for me that would combine comedy and sports. And it's called Beat the Champions. And it's coming on tonight, Tim. And you've got some, some world-class champions who are a part of this thing. Uh, tell me who's in the lineup. Mm -hmm. Well... Have you heard of the Gronk? Rob Gronkowski uh -huh. just won his first Super Bowl. Now, Team Gronk will have the ball on the 10-yard line. Now, Gronk's goal is to catch a touchdown pass. And your goal, John, is to stop him from doing that. It's that simple. Are you going to win this $100,000? Yeah! All right. And then we have Olympic gold medalist Missy Franklin in swimming. And then we have the legendary five-time NBA champion, Hall of Famer Scottie Pippen will be closing out our show and we have some pretty good athletes uh these these people were pretty impressive so the uh the the competition is it, it'll be a surprise you're thinking you're gonna know what's gonna happen but Just you can't predict these outcomes all right five foot seven minister ready ready secret play dan six foot six pro bowler ready ready <laughs> So are you seriously going to put some poor guy on the basketball court with Pippen, the swimming pool with Missy Franklin, on the football field with Gronkowski, or, <laughs> or, or are you going to mix it up a little bit? I mean, throw Pippen in the swimming pool. Nope. Everybody is doing their sport. So Pippen is on the basketball court, Gronk is on the football field, and Missy is in the water. And what we're doing is we're having challengers that are great in football, basketball, and swimming, and they're going up against our champions. But as we found out, it's hard to beat our champion one-on-one -on -one because if you do, you can win $100,000. But if you can't, then I start to level off the playing field a little bit by handicapping our champions with some crazy, crazy handicaps that, uh, I don't know, maybe somebody has an arm tied behind their back. Maybe somebody's blindfolded. But uh, I give them a better shot at winning some money. And with all that, I throw in a whole bunch of comedy and a whole bunch of jokes. So you get your humor and you get your sports all in one TV show. But you're, you're pulling, you're friends with some of these athletes, but you're secretly pulling for the amateurs, aren't you? I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for the amateurs 100% because I am friends with some of these athletes and I want them to lose. They have enough money. They have enough fame. I want their reputation to be tarnished a little bit. I want Grunt to go down. I want Scottie, Scottie Pippen to fail. <laughs> Here we go. Omaha. So go. John is taking my advice. He's running straight for the box. Trunk makes his move. Trunk is in the end zone. Beat the champions coming up tonight right after World <laughs> Cup soccer. Finesse Mitchell, thanks so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Tim. Tune in, Dallas. Well, bring a little something different to this year's 4th of July picnic. We've got an alternative to burgers and dogs.
We are going beyond burgers and dogs for 4th of July this year. Lori Fangio here from Slice of Heaven Cooking School. Good morning. Good morning. You have three recipes for us today. I do. Nice. So we better get cooking Let's quick. get cooking. So what are we doing? What's the first? The first thing we're going to do is make a chicken souvlaki. Okay. And so I've been grilling my chicken. I marinated it in some herbs, some lemon, and some olive oil, and I've grilled it. Great you can Greek it. recipe, right? Yes. And you can grill it inside or outside, okay. whatever works best for you. Now we need to make a really yummy sauce. And so what I've also done is I have grated some cucumbers and that's okay. gonna be the base of our tzatziki sauce. And so I am just going to add a little bit of Greek yogurt, a little bit of sour cream, a, a few more herbs, some garlic and some lemon. And we're just gonna stir that together and we're gonna make a really fantastic sauce. Okay. And so while I'm doing that, you wanna go ahead and start to layer on some of these yeah, vegetables. Sure. Now I suggest that we layer the lettuce first because that's okay. gonna protect the bread and keep right. it from getting soggy oh, so that we can okay. make this and then take it out to the backyard to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just layer on whatever vegetables you like. We've got some onions and cucumbers and tomatoes. That's kind of traditional. But yep. just that fast, I made this yummy tzatziki sauce. It's and it's gonna just have very refreshing, flavor. yeah. Yeah, lots of fresh flavor. Mm. And that cucumber makes it feel really, really light. Mm. Okay, so <laughs> now that we have our veggies, so we'll put on some of the tzatziki sauce, and then now we're ready for the chicken. So yeah, you baby. Layer on some of that great grilled chicken. Yeah, that and looks again, good. you can you can make this inside or outside. And I love these little holders. It makes it yeah, really great perfect. to transport. Right. And it's out. a hearty meal too, which is nice. I mean, that's it's gonna right. fill you. That's okay. right. Okay. okay. So to go along with that, we want to make some corn. And so we we grilled our corn mm -hmm. right on our grill, just okay. like just like our chicken. Um, but to make this extra special special. We made some basil butter, oh. and all I did... You are kidding. <laughs> isn't that beautiful? I mean, the herbs and vegetables are so great right now, so why not load your plate with all kinds of beautiful colors? So all this is is butter, Parmesan cheese, and basil that we put in a food processor. And you Terrific. just slather your corn with that, and really it's ready quickly. to go. We, got, we have a dessert here. Let's just tell them the ingredients, and, they'll, sure. and it will have the recipe on the website as well. Red, white, and blue ingredients. Blueberries, strawberries, sugar. Toss it up, put it in your pan, put, top it with a little uh, crumble, and into the oven for oh. about 45 minutes. Okay. Okay. I'm feeling patriotic yeah. already. <laughs> there you go. All three recipes of Lori's on our website, fox4news.com, as well as a link to uh, her Slice of Heaven cooking school and also the Taste of Paris culinary adventures that you do as That's well. Right. So it's all on our website, fox4news.com. We'll be back.
quick note, late morning trouble northbound here on I-45 just before Lamar, only the left lane getting through and going up right now. The northbound I-35 exit to the tollway blocked until 3 this afternoon from now till 3 and southbound the tollway ramp to 35 still is now, Speaking of 20, that's our percent coverage of showers left this morning and also new ones this afternoon. Not much the next two days. They will be back. They will be back Friday and Saturday. All right. Big thanks to uh, Lori from uh, the uh, Slice of Heaven Cooking School. We've got the link to three recipes on the web.